So I'm going to construct this isometric shape we have here on my isometric block with, with using my tools. I have specific dimensions that's happening. I have two arcs that's happening on each end of it. And my dimensions right now, we're going to have a height of one, a depth of one and a half, and my center lines are going to be one and a half an inch. The distance between each of my arcs here, I have the position of my center line is three quarters as well as here. So it's going to be three quarters on each side, which is going to give me three inches in all. all right. So my box is three inches in width, one high and one and a half in depth. So we're going to go in with the construction of the isometric curve. So first thing we'll do is I'm going to position where my center lines are going to fall. So I'm going to create some guides for that. Right. And I'm also going to position the center line for my going across the depth. So it's starting three quarters and three quarters on both sides. So that's my guides. So if we're reading our dimensions correctly, we would go this way and then the distance between here and here would be one and a half. So it would go one and a half, which is here. So I'm going to construct my guide. Right. Now, the fact is, is that we still need our isometric square to construct our arcs for the wider arcs. And we do have two wide arcs. So I'm going to do my radius that continues on the other side as well. So here, and it should be the same on both sides. So we have our square for one side and our square for the other. So based on our construction of a circle, we need to, for our wide arc, and we do have a wide and a narrow arc. So we need to find, if this is my construction here, this is going to be where my center point for my wide arc is going to be. So going to do that. So I need to construct from my wide arc my perpendicular bisectors. Right? One here. And one here. Now I actually didn't need this one and you're going to see what I mean by that. Okay, so I'm going to go in with my compass. To construct the wide arc I make a match here and make sure it matches here. And then we're going to go in. So we have our wide arc. Now I'm going to go in the opposite direction. Now I only need one of my V's. So I'm going to go at the obtuse angle again. 
and I'm going to put it next to the tangent to create my smaller arc, right? And that's where we want the intersection. So really, we didn't need this one, right? I'll leave it lightly so you can still see it. So that's our intersection right there. Now I'm going to go in, make this smaller. And where it intersects, that's our radius for our smaller arc. So make it smaller. Retouch our tangent point on both sides. Make sure that's where it makes contact. And then we're going to go in. So from tangent to tangent. Okay, so we finished one part of it. We're going to go to the other side. So again, from my obtuse, now I know this is where my smaller arc is going to be. So that's where I need to do my my perpendicular bisector. Okay? And I do know that my tangent, oh, I'm sorry, I did it on the wrong side. But that's fine. This is the opposite, the obtuse angle. So we're just going to connect it from the obtuse to our tangent. And what we've done is we've just created where our small arc is going to be. But I know from this point, from tangent to tangent is my radius. But because I have my small arc measurements already, I'm going to place it on my center point. I'm going to make a mark and see if it fits. Now, sometimes a margin of error happens because we're not using T-squares. And I'm just going to shift it across the amount oops, that is needed. Let me try this again. So I'm going to go in again. All right, from tangent to tangent. Okay, so I have my small arc, and I'm going to go in with my wide arc. My wide arc is from this point here. To measure my tangent okay I'm gonna go in and now I can define my shape at the top so which means I can connect these two tangent points right so we want to carry it down on the other side so one of the ways that we also we, we have to use is we want to project our tangent points down So I'm going to project my tangent points down just as we did with our sketches. Because we've already found our tangent points at the top. All we're doing is projecting it down. I'm also going to project um, the... Uh, Perpendicular, where my perpendicular bisector is going to start as well. 
and I'll do that on both sides. Yeah, I do need it on both sides, so I do need to put it. And then our last one here as well. We do, do, we do need that tangent. And then the one up there as well. All right, so now I'm going to measure one inch in height. All right, these should look familiar, guys. All right, I have a feeling this should fit it, so we're going to overlap. Okay. So we have the height of this, we need the height of this one to get our tangent point. All right, it's right here. Okay, so we're going to uh, carry this down one. So let's make it a little easy and we're going to create coming down this way it's going to be one inch in height so this is my tangent and this is my tangent I'm going to place this at my one inch so I'm going to take the measurement from this get my small arc here, all right, this will be on both sides. Now I'm going to go here and I'm going to mark off my tangent and make my arc from your isometric drawings. We do add a perpendicular bisector that goes from the center to the corner of our acute angle. Where it connects, that's another tangent that if we draw it down, this one Right, it gives you the start point of where your edge is going to start. And you're going to go down until it makes contact with the smaller arc at the base. And then we can then define the smaller arc. I can define this edge as well because I know this is where my tangent is going to stop. And I'm also going to erase this piece that's going over. Okay, now we'll do the same thing again for this side. But the first thing we'll do is we'll create our arc on that side. This is where my large arc stops. So I'm going to get my measurement for my tangent. I'm going to go here. That's going to be my center point again. All right, we mark off where our arc starts. And this is where it's going to stop on that side. Then we're going to take this down vertically, one inch in height. So all we're doing is transferring the needed center points from our top 
construction of it. So I'm going to bring this down and then I'm going to measure one inch. I need to have an end point for my tangent these. Okay, so this is gonna line up. And I'll measure one inch here as well. So those are my two tangents. Right, my tangent is going to be here. This is the other tangent. I'm going to take the measurement of my small arc, the radius of it. Place it at where I've done, make a little mark at my two tangent points. Alright, so I've made my arc, but I'm also going to draw my perpendicular bisector from the center. Where it intersects with my arc here, I need to bring a vertical down. Alright, we can also do it this way and also just connect the two ends. And then where they connect, that's where our edges will be. So I'm going to draw this down until, so my two tangent meets. Okay, so I've shown you the two ways of how you can do it. And I'll just define my arc. All right, I think I have about 